Today's message has been brought to you by Faith Family Church in Billings, Montana. For more information, visit faithfamilybillings.com. Let's uh, open our Bibles to Mark chapter 5. And we'll, we'll wrap this up here briefly. All right. I got about 20 minutes here, so. I want to, I believe we're at the end of our first series here on uh, the image of God or knowing the Father. And uh, what I, what I want to encourage you to do is I'm not going to review everything uh, this morning. I was going to, but, and just kind of do it as a, a review, but I'm not going to because it just, it would take too much time for the amount of time that we have. But I would encourage you to go to back to the website um, and go under the media tab, and the audio messages are there. And I'm going to post the rest of them uh, here shortly um, with uh, SoundCloud. And you can listen to them um, and just review. You know, like if you ever miss a Sunday, you can go there and listen and, and review what we're going over because you want to stay with us so that we can, we're, stay, we're keeping pace to get to the end at the same time. Um, but. If you, if you miss, you can go catch up there and listen to the messages, write the scriptures down, look at them again and again and again, um, and allow them to, to really shape the way you think because knowledge is what gives you is how faith begins. I mean, you will never have faith beyond your knowledge. It's just, it, it's impossible. You can't have faith in nothing. You have to have faith in something. And the scripture says in Romans ten seventeen that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, correct? So Romans ten seventeen says that, well, it, you have to hear something in order to, for faith to come. And we're going to, actually, I'm going to go to Romans. Actually, let's turn, I'm sorry, I said go to Mark 5. You can hold it, but go to Romans 10. And we're going to start there. So review them. Go back and look at it. And the message that I want to just teach with you this morning is just very simply this, responding in faith. If you want to give it a title. It's the image of God. It's the eighth message, and it's called Responding in Faith. And uh, we touched on it a little bit last week, and I think we'll be wrapping up um, this series this week and then moving into, um, I believe the next series will be um, Understanding Your Enemy. And we're going to talk about uh, the devil and uh, some of the things that he, he does, his characteristics, what he's like. So initially, we've learned about the Father. Next, we'll learn about our enemy. And there's a particular scripture that comes to mind that says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So if you know your God and you know your enemy, you know who to submit to and you know who to resist. And you know who to receive from and you know who should be fleeing from you. So we're going to look, in, look into that. And uh, we're looking to devils and demons and things like that. And if, when you understand who you are in Christ, none of those things are scary. You know, it's just not, I mean, he's a defeated foe. He's been stripped. So, um, but we're going to look in that, which is very helpful because he's doing a lot of confusing in the earth and in the church. I'll bet you that. And so we're believing God that the Holy Spirit will give us light. So Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and we're going to look at this uh, faith message because we want to, this is how we receive from the Lord. You can hear about the goodness of God, but unless you know how to receive and act on what he said about himself, you don't get the experience of it. Romans ten seventeen says this. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray real quick. Father, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for everything you've done. Now, Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. We unite our hearts together in faith, expecting to hear from you. Lord, you, I yield my tongue to you. You know what to say. You know how to say it. Give me illustration. Give me words or utterance to speak that will open the minds and hearts of your people, Lord, and including myself, so that we can hear from you. We acknowledge, Holy Spirit, that you're our teacher. Teach us now in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Okay, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Um, the thought that the Lord had, um, had given to me about the scripture is simply this. Packaged inside the word of God is the faith that is necessary for you to believe. So how does faith come? It comes by 
hearing. Notice it doesn't say it comes by having heard. It comes by hearing. People oftentimes hear scriptures and they go, oh yeah, I know that. No, no, if you hear it and you think, I know that, that means you don't know it. You may have heard it, but hearing it, receiving it, and acting in the faith that is available in it is two different things. You can hear and not respond. There are whole passages in the New Testament, especially in the Gospels, where it talks about Jesus went to places, did miracles, signs, and wonders, amazing things, and whole cities didn't repent. What do you mean by repent? They didn't change their life at all. They just thought, oh, that Jesus guy, he was cool. He's a nice guy. He's a cool cat. He, he, he can do miracles. Miracles? Yeah. What else did he say? He said he was the son of God. But did you see the miracles? He said he need, we needed to repent and believe in him. Eh, I kind of like my old life. Happens all the time. They didn't change to where judgment was pronounced over them, to where literally Jesus said, woe unto you. It will be, the scripture literally says this, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment. How many are familiar with Sodom and Gomorrah? Pretty rough place. And yet these people, in fact, I think he said, correct me if I'm wrong, that if Sodom and Gomorrah would have saw the miracles that he did, they would have repented How hard are these people's hearts? You know that's in the world today, right now? There are a lot of people, oh yeah, I love Jesus. You couldn't, you wouldn't know if they knew Jesus. There's no difference in their life. Jesus makes a difference. So faith comes to you while you're hearing the word of God. How many of you ever sat in a service or you've been somewhere and you heard somebody say something, it's like a light goes on on the inside of you. You go, oh, that makes sense. That is faith coming to you. Now you have an opportunity when you see that light to follow it or to reject it. Does that make sense? Now, I've rejected it. We've all rejected the light at times. Our goal is to never reject the light. Our salvation with the Lord is based on our faith in Jesus Christ. It's not based on our performance. But the Lord is giving us opportunity to walk in higher and higher levels of understanding in what we have in Christ. There is much more to your relationship with Christ than fire insurance. You say, what do you mean by that? It's not just a get out of hell free card. It's a relationship. The purpose of Faith Family Church to bring people in for them to discover life in Christ, for them to discover the gifts that they have in Christ and then put them into practice, for them then to take that life in Christ and go out and share that goodness with somebody else. You need to understand about your father hearing those words, which then brings faith, which enlightens your mind, which then gives you an opportunity to react or respond, is a better word, in faith to the Lord and grow in your relationship with him. You see that? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing. You say, well, I don't don't have faith. I know because you need to hear. Well, how do I get faith? Well, you don't pray for it. I'm going to say that again. You do not pray for faith. You get faith from the word of God. Well, I heard a preacher say you're supposed to pray for faith. I know they were wrong. You take everything you think you know and go back to the word. Where did Jesus teach it? Where did he say it? I, I I can tell you a scripture in the gospels where it looks like he said it. But if you read the whole context, he didn't. You do not pray for faith. You go back to the word. You look at the word and you say, Lord, you are so good. You are the best. That you put faith inside the words. So as I read your word, see now this makes Christianity exciting. As I read your word, your faith is going to go into me because I receive it. It makes it a whole lot easier to believe his words when you're believing with his, his ability, his faith. Because it's encased 
in his word. Well, I don't know how to overcome this addiction that I have. Go to the word on being set free. Go to the word on on self-control. Go to the word on healing and deliverance. Let it get in you. Yeah, but it didn't happen right away. I know. Keep going back to the word. So many people give up right before a breakthrough because the enemy tries to pour on pressure. Don't quit. Be like the pit bull. Lock your jaw. Lock your jaw on that word and don't let it go. And when the enemy comes to you and he says, that, that word that you heard from, it's not going to happen. You say, nope, it's working right now. Well, you don't feel anything. Oh, I'm not moved by feel. Faith is in me because the word is in me. So what you're telling me, devil, is that God's going to fail? Can you imagine God and fail in the same room? It just doesn't happen. We say, well, why, why did I have failure in my life? Because we disconnected from God. <laughs> come on. Come on. Who do you think is at fault in, on the end of the relationship between us and God? You think God's in heaven going, well, maybe, I'll, maybe I'm a healer today. Every single day, he is the same. Steady. He never changes. Why are these things going on in my life? We looked at it in Genesis 3, and we'll look at it when we, when we study about the devil. The devil's in the earth. He's infected the system. But we have the antivirus. Faith comes by hearing, not by having heard. How am I going to overcome it? By faith. And not only by faith, you say, well, not my faith, well, God's faith. Because he's giving it to you in his word. You can do it in him. All things are possible to him who believes. Not part of the things. And all things are possible with God. Always. Every single time. Now here, here's the tension you're having, okay? The tension is... Your mind travels back to how you didn't win over and over. So what needs to happen is I'm going to make a decision. Now, this is where your will comes in. I'm going to choose to believe this word no matter what I feel or what I see. If you do it, he will do his part. But don't walk away from the word and then go, God, you didn't. You really think at the end of your life that you're going to stand before God and have evidence against him that he did not do what he said he would do. <laughs> oh, somebody's, somebody just went, kaboom. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> think about it. You're going to stand before God and say, Lord, I believed your word and you didn't do it. Come on. Nobody's going to have the guts to even say that, first of all. Let's understand that we are the ones that repent, not God. We mean repent. That doesn't just mean cry and feel bad. It just means change. God's not interested in you, in, in, in you feeling bad. <laughs> some, people, some people are like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm very sure. How many times... I'm going to raise my hand first so nobody's uncomfortable. <laughs> How many times have you done something, felt bad, but then it never changed? You never changed. You did it again and again and again. So what did feeling bad do for you? Absolutely nothing. Conviction is not condemnation. Conviction gives you a way out. Lord, I'm screwing up. He goes, I know, Sean. <laughs> if you'd listen to me, I'd get you out. Okay, how do I get out? And then he shows you, and you walk away from it, and you have growth. But feeling bad never changed me. God is not in heaven shaming you. He doesn't do that. He's in heaven going, hey, let's go this way. The enemy is jumping up and down and spitting smoke in the air going, oh, you sinner, you sinner, you sinner. And that's where we need to, in knowing God, we need to go, you know what? God said he loved me. And that he's for me. 
I'm going to reject all this other mess and just believe what he said and allow that faith to operate, and I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Because faith comes by hearing, and once you know something about your heavenly Father, you can begin to access in by faith to those things that he said about himself and begin to receive those things. You think about all that the Father has is mine. Well, how are you going to access that? Well, the faith came necessary to access it when I heard the word. Do you know how I know faith came? Because when I taught it, not only did I like jump inside, but I saw smiles in people's faces. Joy came. What's that a sign of? Faith. Oh, it's like an open door. You like, it's like you're in a dark place and all of a sudden the light turns on. You go, oh, we go that way. Does that make sense? That's exactly what the word of God is like for you. So it, that being said, that faith comes. Now I know, okay, my dad's got the fat calf. <laughs> you're talking about the prodigal son, him coming home. He's got the ring. He's got the shoes. He's got the best robe. He's got the fat calf. What does that mean? Good, good eats, good eating. And he's got all of that, and he's waiting for me to enjoy it. Because, see, the, the younger son had been in a bunch of sin and repented. The older son just lived there and was super religious. He obeyed everything, but he enjoyed nothing. How many Christians are doing that? Well, I'm obeying. I'm just obeying. Well, get happy about obeying. Enjoy the blessings. Don't just... Obey, I've got to obey. Nobody wants to even serve your God when you run around with all your rules and frowns. <laughs> Jesus had joy. He wasn't like the religious leaders. The re- if you're religious, you're just going to end up running around wanting to kill everybody like they did. People, <laughs> learn how to drive. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's not God. It doesn't mean there isn't consequence for sin, but God's not interested in them following rules. He's inst- interested in them falling in love with him. You'll, you'll obey once you change inside. Law can't make you change. If it did, it would, we would no, no reason for Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith coming to you for any situation that you are facing comes by hearing the word on that subject. Faith always comes from hearing the word of God. F.F. Bosworth said, faith begins where the will of God is known. Your faith will not exceed your knowledge, period. It won't. It won't exceed it. It won't exceed the knowledge that you receive from the word of God. Okay, how does faith come? Let's mark five and then we'll wrap it up. I got five minutes. And then we'll just hit a pause button and we'll go next week. (laughs) I never, I don't think I ever end a message, a series. We just hit a pause button, disconnect, attach to another part, go on. (laughs) There's so much in the word of God. I mean, I know why Paul preached all night that one time. Mark chapter five, verse 25 says this. I just want to answer a few questions out of this. And one of them is, how, how did the faith come? What was her response to the faith? What was the result of her faith? And what did Jesus emphasize? So Mark 5.25 says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. In other words, touched his robe. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But, she, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Okay, let's look at the first question. How did the faith come? Now, don't, don't hear this story and go, yeah, I've heard that story. No, you could hear it like you've never heard it before. 
if you're in faith, if you're expecting to hear from the Lord. This is your answer. This is your answer. It isn't, it isn't getting the Pope to pray for you. God bless the Pope. Love the Pope. Happy for the Pope, okay? This isn't, you, you understand, religion teaches dependence on a man. God and true relationship with God and fellowship in the word of God teaches relationship with the Lord. It's not that we don't need each other and that we don't need to come together and church is unnecessary. But you have, if you're going to develop like you should in the way that the Lord wants you to, you need to go to him and go to him and go to him and go to him. And then if you have questions, come to us. He said, that doesn't make sense. Or we're believing God for this, but I don't know if we can, you know, we need, we need help in our faith. That's where the leadership and us, we can help you. We can join together with you with more experience maybe than you have and more understanding in those areas and begin to believe God that direction. Um, But go to the Lord. So hear it how you've never heard it before. But it says this, the question is this, how did faith come to her? We see how faith came to her her for healing. In verse 27, it says, when she heard about Jesus. Now you need to ask yourself the question, What would she have heard about Jesus that made her think she could come up behind him, touch his clothes, and be healed? Don't just think, oh, yeah, she heard about Jesus. No. What did she hear about Jesus? What did she hear? Because faith comes by... Did she have a Bible? Nope. The Bible wasn't around yet. Not like this. So what happened? There were words in somebody that she knew that they had seen, witnessed, or heard from somebody that Jesus was healing people. They took those words. Oh, you got it. This is just it, this. The sower sows the word. You know what I mean? They took those words to her and said, hey, look, I know you've been sick for a long time, 12 years. Um, Jesus is healing over here. People are getting healed. Well, is he a doctor? No, no, he's not a doctor. Well, do I have to pay for it? Nope, nope, no charge. It's free. No, but what is better than that? Medical costs can be high. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get into that. (laughs) But free? And, And what happens? She hears a word. She's open to it. It settles inside of her. And all of a sudden, now there's a new way out that she didn't see before. Light comes. Faith. Oh, faith. We haven't seen what faith can do yet. But we will. It comes in, and it's God. God in a man. Now you think about that. Now this, I, my mind's just going, I can't say it all. But she receives it and she moves. All of a sudden, now you read this and you read through this passage. She spent all her money. She suffered at the hands of the doctors. And she was nothing better but grew worse. So where are her escape passages that she knows of now? They're none. Man has done everything. You ever felt like that? We've done everything. Wait, have we? Have we? Or have we just not heard the right thing from the Lord yet? Because when she heard the right thing, oh, glory to God. (laughs) Everything changed like that. Now, all of a sudden, the deliverance doesn't cost her anything. She doesn't have to. I read the history of some of the things that they had her do. If you, <laughs> I know they were trying, but you realize they're practicing medicine. That practice word, pretty big deal. <laughs> Brother Hagin used to say to us, the graveyards are full of people that they practiced on. It's true. I am not, I'm not trying to be disparaging of the, of the medical field because obviously they've done some good. And there are things that they can help with. But let me tell you, there are a lot more medical deaths in a year than you, than you hear about on the news or because they don't report it on the news. 
It's a whole lot more than gun control deaths. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's true. But all of a sudden now, this woman heard a word that healing was going out for free. She received that word into her. And then what does her faith cause her to do? It says here that the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, she had spent all her money on physicians and didn't get better, but got worse. She is probably very discouraged and physically weak. You imagine bleeding for 12 years. Your body is not doing good. It's like having an open wound that's bleeding constantly for 12 years. Well, you know how your body reproduces blood, but at what rate is she losing it to where it's being reproduced? She probably spent a lot of time in bed or just sitting around. She probably was pale. Not like me pale, but like worse. <laughs> you know, like drain, blood drain out of your face pale. She's weak, but all of a sudden, she hears a word. Whew. She hears a word. And, all, and physical, some level of physical strength had to come back to her and hope because she gets out of her house and starts walking to find Jesus. And it says, the word of God, talking about she heard, then what does she do? She hears the word of God. It's implanted in her heart. It causes the spirit of man within her to explode with creativity and the power of God. She hears the word of God, and that word causes, causes the spirit of man within her, her spirit, to explode with creativity and, and power. What do you mean creativity? All of a sudden, this word she hears is implanted inside of her, and what comes out? I need to go touch him, and I'll be healed. What? Go touch him and I'll be healed? That's like, if I, that's like if I had this coat on and you hear a word about healing. You know what I mean? I could set the coat right here. Apparently, the healing power of God can get in clothing because it was in Jesus' clothing. And we know other scriptures in the book of Acts where they took cloths from Paul and took them distances to people and laid them on them and the demons were cast out of them and their bodies were healed. Now, huh? Boy, that just defies medical science. Um, yeah, could you just put the antivirus in the cloth and send it to me in the mail? That'd be great. Because when you do that, you'll be as good as God. You see what I'm saying? Something happened. She received this word into her, and then all of a sudden, I got to go, I got to touch him, and when I do, everything will change. You don't just think of that on your own. That's the Holy Ghost on the inside. There are business ideas. There are how many creative things that have never been released into the earth because we just haven't heard the right word yet. Your deliverance is so close to you. If you only knew, all you need to do, hear the word. Now you know why we want to read one chapter a day, Monday through Friday. Because see, the Holy Ghost can do for you what I cannot. I can't. I'm just a man. Outside of me operating in a gift or the Holy Spirit giving me something, I can't do anything for you. I am not your savior. Now, there's, you say, why do you say that like that? Because there, people get their eyes on people. Who is your savior? And who is your teacher? The Holy Ghost. Now, he flows through gifts in the body of Christ, obviously. We're here to help you grow. But listen, get your faith in him. Hear a word and then make a move. Make a move. Well, what if it's the wrong move? Well, at least you tried, which is a whole lot more than a lot of people are doing. You know what I mean? So what she hears is, I'll just go touch the clothes. So she gets up. There's enough strength, life, faith in that word to have her get up, get out of her house, start walking. She presses through a crowd. I mean a crowd. I'm not talking like, you know, there's some people around. No, no, no. They're smashed together, if you read the context. Because the disciples later on, Jesus said, who touched me? And the di disciples said, what are you talking about? Jesus, hello. There's thousands of people around us. They're all touching us. 
I'm, I would imagine the disciples were probably trying to keep people from crushing Jesus. Because if you read it in different translations and you look at the words that are used in there, it was like a, a mass crowd coming together. She pressed through that crowd. How? She's a bleeding lady. Weak. Spent all her money. Supposedly hopeless. And yet this word comes. And whoa. Let's do it. A word comes and everything changes. <laughs> you can have everything change. This, you know, this wasn't just recorded for just for fun. It's so you can have it. It's so you can have it. What was... The, I'm going to finish with this. No, I'm not going to even go to that last point. We'll just have to do it some other time. I think we got the main point here. She heard a word. She received that word. She pressed through and touched the clothes and was healed. Because she heard a word, because that word contained faith, because that word contained an idea, a direction that no other, nothing she had ever heard before. She would never heard that before. What do you mean? It's, it's not a medical treatment? Nope, no treatment. You mean I don't, I don't have to, you know, I don't have to have something pumped into my veins to try and stop the bleeding? Nope. I don't, I don't have to have this or that. I don't have to go through some treatment. Or I don't have to have surgery. Nope, no surgery. People are just touching his clothes and getting healed. People go, that's wild. You know what's even more wild? Peter's shadow healed people. That's really wild. What if I said... Just get in the shadow. You know what most church world would do? <gasps> Who do you think you are? I'm just trying to be like Peter. Come on, think about this. His shadow healed people in the street. They were laying people out in the street so he could walk by. And when he walked by, can you imagine? Somebody in it, well, I don't think they had wheelchairs, but laying on a mat... He's walking by, the shadow hits him, they jump up, the crutches go, the blindness leaves. Now, <laughs> this is a process. But if you're willing, God will take us down a path to where we see those things. Not just the preacher. Come on, don't stagger on me now. Don't buckle back now. Is it in the word? Did God do it for people before? Did Jesus not say the works that I do? Shall you do also and greater works than these? Don't run away from it now. Keep expecting. But Lord, I know this is, I see great things in your word. And he'll say, yeah, come on and walk on the water. And you know what the enemy's going to do? Wind and waves, wind and waves, wind and waves. Because everybody knows you can't walk on water when it's windy. <laughs> Some of you will get that later. You'll be driving down the road. Oh, yeah. What difference does it make if the wind blows? They're walking on water. Everybody knows that if the wind's blowing, you can't walk on the water. But normally, if the, if the water's calm... <laughs> Do you see that? So, the word for today, hope. If the tree's cut down, it'll grow again. Your life can be better than it's ever been. Than it's ever been. I'll tell you about a lady's, a, a lady's bleeding stopping. My wife did a women's deal uh, probably a year ago. It was just, a, it was just like a... A weekly women's thing. Like a, a, what do they call it? A group, a mom, mom's group. That's what it is. I don't go, so, you know. I've never been invited. What? I thought we were about equality here. <laughs> so my wife goes and does this women's meeting. There's a lady there who had been bleeding, I think, for three weeks. Because she had had a child. Something went wrong. She had been bleeding for three weeks. My wife prays for her. She goes, they, they, were, gonna, they were planning surgery to remove her female organs if the bleeding didn't stop. She goes back 
to the doctor, I think it was the next day the bleeding had stopped. The bleeding had stopped. Does God still stop bleeding today? Oh oh, man, does he ever? And a whole lot more. He's not just looking down at you going, man, I hope they make heaven. He's looking at you going, I want the best for them. I'm not telling you that it's just going to be easy, that the enemy's just going to let us do it. No. There's, there's, there's giants in the land. There's demons in the land. But listen, we've got God. Access him. Receive it. That word that you heard that went, oh, go back to it and back to it. That's the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Receive this. Amen? And if you need prayer for anything, we will pray. Grab us. We'll pray with you. Grab any of the leaders. We'll pray with you. We'll agree with you. I mean, I'm talking like now. I'm not talking like a week from now after service or anything. We will pray with you. If you need healing, we'll pray with you. We will. And God will move because he's, he's faithful. We, we don't got to be concerned about God one bit. He's going to do exactly what he said he would do. We're just going to make sure we stay in line with him. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Holy Spirit, you're the best teacher. You're the best teacher. Thank you for these words. We give you all the glory for everything that was said that was right and good. And Father, we just know and continue to believe you, not only that this place is filling up, but that you are growing and developing the people that come And that they are growing and developing in their relationship with you. That strength comes, life comes. Lord, I thank you that your favor and your blessing, all that you have is ours. So we receive it, we thank you for it, and we purpose to be a blessing to someone else. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. If you would like more information about Faith Family Church, including service times and location, visit faithfamilybillings.com.